Hi, and welcome back to the channel. My name is Drew, and this is the Just a Guy Linux YouTube channel. So it's been a minute, right? A couple weeks since my last video, and I uh, wanted to thank all of you that have been watching the videos. Uh, even though there hasn't been a lot of new content, there has been some new subscribers, which has been fantastic because I'm just a, just a hair under 400 right now, which is honestly more than I thought that I would ever get. <laughs> Um, so thank you for subscribing. Thanks, thank you for leaving uh, generous comments um, for some really good information um, when it comes to planning uh, uh, videos for the future. I wanted to um, I want to talk about where I started uh, as a Linux user, and that would be around 2015. And the 2015, I was a Linux, sorry, a Linux. I was a Windows user, and I'm not sh sure exactly what version it was. I think, I mean, I definitely used Windows Vista uh, and 7, and I probably used Windows 8, uh, but I did not care for it, not even a little bit. Um, and I had all kinds of issues, and it crashed way too much. And that could have been, a, again, that could have been like a hardware issue. It could, it, it, you know, it could have been. So um, I started looking at alternatives and like many people, when they start looking at moving away from Windows, uh, you start off with like Ubuntu or Linux Mint or something like that. And obviously my choice was to use Linux Mint 17 Kiana. And I didn't know very much, if anything, about desktop environments. I just, I kind of went by what the picture looked like on, you know, when I did a, a Google search. You know, I was like, okay, what does Cinnamon look like? What does XFCE look like? And so on. And so, obviously, since I was going to pick Linux Mint, um, I, I just went with what their flagship desktop environment was, um, which was really good. You know, it still is when, you know, Linux Mint with Cinnamon um, is fantastic. So, I, and I used it probably the entire cycle until Linux Mint 18 came out. And I thought to myself, you know, I want to try something new. Um, I mean, I think I felt fairly proficient at using Cinnamon. So I wanted to see uh, what XFC was about. I saw where many articles that, you know, said that XFCE was lighter. And I probably only had like four gigs of RAM on the machine that I was using. So I wanted to see if, uh, if that made a big difference. And I thought it did. So I, you know, I installed XFCE on you know, Linux Mint 18 and probably used that for a while. But when you start using like a desktop environment or you switch off, you kind of put you, gives you the bug and you say, well, what's the best distribution for XFCE? You know, what's the best one thing I can do? And you, cause you don't know, you know, until you start distro hopping and looking at what other distributions have and how they, you know, incorporate their desktop environment, you just don't know. By the way, this is, um, this is not a complete, I, I noticed that, you know, as I was, um, as I was kind of looking at this, uh, you know, this list, I was thinking, man, I, I left out a few things. Um, and one of them would be, I tried um, Zubuntu. Well, I tried Ubuntu probably first, and then I went to like Zubuntu. Um, I, and by the way, I, I, you know, Ubuntu, I, you know, there's a, in the Linux community, obviously there's, you know, people that love Ubuntu and and Zubuntu and Ubuntu Mate and so on. In fact, I put Ubuntu Mate on this lake down here uh, because I did not use it very long, but I put this asterisk here to say, maybe I should have used it more, um, at least in my initial um, hunt for a uh, desktop environment. Um, so anyway, I, I really like Mate. Um, I don't like it as much as XFCE, and I don't like it as much as Cinnamon, but it's probably in that uh, third third category when it comes to desktop environments. And I, you know, I've tried GNOME. By the way, 
I've tried GNOME on a number of different distributions and I've tried Plasma probably just on KDE, which is why I put that. And they're just not for me. <laughs> it's just the bottom line. They're just not for me. So um, let me go back. So as I was kind of like hunting, what's the best distribution for XFCE? I tried a few. And obviously, Zubuntu was one, and I thought that was really good. I tried MX Linux. And there's a re by the way, there's a reason why MX Linux is as popular as it is. Uh, be besides the fact that it's Debian-based and not Ubuntu-based, which is what I really liked about it, um, they have those MX tools that make things really easy. There's, I mean, there's a reason why it's top three in, on DistroWatch. Um, <clears throat> I don't know when I decided that I wanted to try something that was Arch-based, but I think the very first thing I tried that worked for me was Antergos. And Antergos is obviously not being developed anymore. Uh, the two, got, two of the developers, I believe, if, I, if my memory serves, are the main guys for Endeavor OS now. But, and Antergos was something that I used for a, a while, I think, before, and then it, you know, and then they discontinued uh, you know, with packages. And I think I actually used it all the way through, um, through its like demise. Um, and so I kind of got a taste for using an Arch-based distro. I, I really like the AUR. Um, and then I tried Arch Labs. Now, Arch Labs is a, really good Arch-based distribution that should be more popular than it is. I think it's, I mean, it's not going to be in top 50, but it's, and it might be top 100 on DistroWatch, but they just came out with a new, um, a new distro like two weeks ago, something like that, maybe less. Um, and I want to say that it's one of the more like, I love their installation. I think they use just like bash scripts. And so if you are looking for an arch based distribution that has like a, a window manager like Openbox or BSPWM, I would definitely give this a shot. Um, you know, obviously we're not on this channel, we're doing Debian, uh, but I, I respect what they do. I really do. Uh, which kind of leads me to like my Openbox journey. So I'm like, oh, open box, it's super light and right click menus and, you know, the tent two panel, which I think is really phenomenal for, and keeping it light. So, uh, you know, I went to, I went to look for something that um, was Debian based that had open box and Crunchbang plus plus was on that list as well as Bunsen labs, by the way. Um, Bunsen Labs is still uh, out there and still very good, but I, you know, if if you had if you had to pick, Crunchbang Plus Plus is like really good, uh, and 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 their open box version is is exceptional. So um, if you are if you if you don't want to install open box like we did uh, in that one series, um, then, you know, and you don't want to do the, you know, the entire installation and you want to use Debian stable, Crunchbang plus plus is a fin is a really good way to go. Um, up until like very recently, I was using Manjaro cinnamon on a desktop, uh, that was kind of like, is like the community desktop at my house. And, um, and then I, you know, I did a whole video on installing, um, uh, Debian testing on it and using the Cinnamon desktop environment and it's working great. It's working really good. I did, like I said, I have experience using Arch. I really like the a AUR and it's allowed me to try a lot of different like distribution, uh, sorry, uh, desktop environments and window managers. Um, the stability of using Arch is where it ended up not being for me um, and like I said I have a older network printer um, and I want it to work and mo more for actually the uh, the scanner than the printer because I don't really like to print a whole lot but I do scan stuff uh, into PDF 
And so that, just that, that, you know, problem of, you know, using that network scanner printer um, put me off. Not to mention there have been, there have been up, you know, things where I've installed something or updated something and it's broken. Um, even, even Debian testing, I think, is a more stable environment than than regular Arch, than vanilla Arch. That, that's my personal opinion. I, I could be wrong, but I mean, I've never had a problem using either Debian stable. I definitely haven't had a problem using Debian stable. Uh, I have had maybe one or two option uh, opportunities to um, switch out. You know, well, Debian testing has had a couple problems, but overall it's been rock solid it's been rock solid so and that's where i am now debian uh using i uh, my work computer is debian stable i3 gaps and it works great um, but as you can see i have done a series on xfce and i've done a series on openbox and i think the most natural thing at least for me because I want to like try something new and not I3, I want to go back and revisit BSPWM. And I think the one thing that makes separates that is its configuration. And the configuration for BSPWM is a lot more simple for someone who wants to like switch off of one of these desktop environments and try a uh, window manager. It really is simple when you break down um, the configuration file for BSPWM and keep it separate from the key bindings. <coughs> Excuse me. Keep it separate from the key bindings, which is using XXHKD. So if you are if you are wanting to like try something new in terms of a window manager and open box might not be well, OpenBox is, an, is a floating window manager. BSPWM is a tiling window manager. Um, and that's where I went. So I went from OpenBox to BSPWM. So that's where we're going to go next, basically. And the one thing that I want to do is I want to take some time with this because I really want to kind of build out a, um, a Debian testing machine that uses BSPWM and may not even have a bar. Uh, and just uses um, just uses key bindings for everything. So this is going to be an experiment, and you may and may not or may not like it. But I really I, I'm I'm curious, and so uh, I hope that you will like the next um, the next series. Um, so we'll get started with that right away. But I wanted to get this video out and uh, explain where we're going next. All right, thanks and have a good day.